Okay, now it's better. Okay, so thank you everybody and uh, thanks Sebastian and uh, I'm glad to be here. And I, I will talk about uh, borders and archeology span and boundaries in the Southern Levant. Um, and uh, okay, so uh, if we're talking about borders in antiquity, clearly they are not like borders today. Uh, and uh, even the, if there were borders, uh, there's probably more movement of people that crossed it than we are usually uh, thinking about uh, controlled borders and restrict borders today. So uh, uh, also the uh, notion of a fixed border maybe was not so relevant. There were more border areas rather than a line division. But I think uh, there is clearly a concept of borders and boundaries. In, uh, uh, in antiquity as, ancient, as evidence in ancient texts. Uh, and I will specifically uh, relate to the biblical uh, period and the biblical uh, text uh, and the Iron Age in the Southern Levant, uh, uh, and mostly according to archeology span uh, about the evidence of borders. Uh, generally, we can uh, define several border types. Uh, borders can be like between two political entities which means that on both sides, they are conceived as borders. I mean, people are aware of that from both sides, but they can also be uh, kind of more uh, unilateral, like imperial borders, uh, borders at an uh, entity edge or frontier type of border. This is conceived as a border on one side or border region on one side, like, okay, after that area, we don't know what happened and so on, but not necessarily by the population on the other side. So, uh, which may not be politically uh, organized. Um, also, we have the objective borders, which are uh, usually geographical ones, climatic ones, which always existed, and they are borders, uh, physical borders. And in any case, we have to remember that mostly borders and boundaries are region, we know of them as region of separation and sometimes conflict, but also they are regions of contact and influences, though they have this ambiguous uh, uh, characteristic. Uh, so now I will jump into the uh, region of the of the Levant, and the biblical narrative uh, describes actually borders uh, quite often in some of the uh, texts, uh, usually between tribes, tribes of Israel. But um, also we know that there are various political or uh, uh, possibly ethnic political entities in this region, in the Southern Levant, mostly in the Iron Age II, uh, the first half of the first millennium BC. And we know it both from the biblical uh, uh, narrative and from external narratives like Neo-Syrian uh, texts and also from uh, archeological record. We have the uh, several kingdoms and several polities, the uh, kingdom of Israel, Judah, um, uh, Ammon, Moab, uh, we have the Philistine region, the Phoenician region, maybe other uh, uh, entities as well. Uh, so we have this existence of uh, uh, political entities, so maybe we have borders too. So uh, uh, going to archaeological record, uh, border areas are discussed. I mean, it has been researched uh, in the past um, in various uh, 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 manners, uh, for example, the border uh, between Canaan or the Southern Levant and Egypt is discussed mostly in the second millennium BC, where there are many uh, uh, Egyptian texts, and uh, uh, we also have a difference, some differences uh, in the material culture between the Levant and uh, uh, Egypt. So we have some border area in which maybe uh, uh, the um, um, the <clears throat> government is not clear. Uh, we also know in the Shfila region, uh, which is actually in the, uh, well, the center of Israel, a region uh, which uh, uh, was in research uh, uh, raised uh, the issues of borders. Usually it was the border between uh, Judeans or Judea uh, um, uh, kingdom and the Philistine uh, territory. And uh, this is a back on background, I think, of the stories of the books of uh, uh, the book of Judges 
and Samuel 1 in the uh, Old Testament, which are talking about these issues of conflicts between the Israelites and the Philistines. And they have a, it seems to have a, like a border because once the Philistines uh, uh, conquer there, the, Judea, the Israelite area, then it goes back and forth. So uh, uh, because of these stories, I think a lot of uh, archeological uh, research was uh, dealing with that. And several sites are, are uh, are mentioned in, in studied as border border sites like Kirbet Kayafa, Bet Shemesh, Tel Buna, uh, between these regions uh, during the Iron Age, and they are uh, uh, their material culture uh, um, illustrates both certain uh, Israelite or Canaanite uh, elements and also uh, Philistine elements, but uh, um, like Tel Bet Shemesh which was excavated for a very long uh, period. And uh, uh, there are some uh, Philistine uh, elements, which are Philistine uh, decorated pottery and more uh, uh, pig bones. And there are some Judean or Israelite uh, elements like uh, uh, plans of architecture, of domestic architecture, some other pottery, which is not uh, Philistine. So this is the uh, uh, geographically it's in the border. So maybe uh, the population was mixed. Maybe there were influences from both sides. So, but we still have to think, what is the meaning of the border? Is this only the contact or there are more things happening here on the border? Uh, so this is our question also we have to think about uh, too. Uh, but uh, another uh, example uh, from the other side, not of contact, but rather as a more uh, uh, militaristic view of, uh, of the border is some sites in the Negev Highlands, in the Northern Negev, which is, in the south of Israel, south of Judah, uh, during the Iron Age 2A. Uh, these are uh, small sites which are uh, 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 interpreted as strongholds. Uh, and uh, some say they were some kind of a border strongholds that protected uh, the kingdom of Judah from the north or the Israel uh, Israelite kingdom from other uh, 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 polities or something like that. Uh, so this is another type of border, not of contact, but of a, a, a blockade or a military uh, presence. Um, but uh, uh, I will not talk about these regions. I will focus on another region, which is a clear uh, border area, the Jordan Valley. Jordan Valley, uh, you can see this in the, on the map in red. Uh, and uh, um, uh, this is a clear uh, geographical uh, uh, borderline. It's on the Rift Valley and also a political and climatic uh, border region, uh, for sure. Uh, and I will describe uh, one site in this region, which I'm working on uh, archaeologically. So I will focus uh, on a site uh, which is called the uh, Khirbet Uja al Fuka. It's not a very big site, but it's an interesting site, I think. It's uh, near uh, Uja Spring, just north of uh, uh, eight kilometers north of Jericho. Um, and this Jordan Valley, uh, as I said, it's a, it's a border area. It's a very uh, arid area today, hot, uh, not much agriculture, uh, but it's an important uh, land route because it lies on the Rift Valley, uh, connecting actually Africa and Asia uh, and the uh, southern Levant in between back to the prehistoric times. So this is an important uh, route, uh, but it also is a border between two geographical regions to the east and west, which are, uh, one of them is uh, more Mediterranean and the other is uh, more uh, Arabian. So uh, this was a border area, clearly, I mean, uh, uh, objectively uh, during the Bronze and Iron Age, uh, as well as it is today. So we have like uh, this area and uh, uh, this site is uh, located uh, near a spring. The area is very uh, hot, not much water, very important. The springs th that are located in this area every uh, 10 or 20 or 30 kilometers are very important. So uh, this is a strategic point. It's also a site located on a hilltop and uh, uh, it is strategically located uh, in the region, it's as you can see the the view from the site, and uh, the site I did not uh, find the site. The site was uh, surveyed already by the Mashi Hill Survey, uh, uh, and was surveyed and was identified as an Iron Age, to a 1.5 hectare sized site, uh, fortified site, 
um, and there are many uh, building remains visible on the surface. And, uh, but it was not excavated, and I, I'm excavating it in the past uh, five years. So just a little bit of, uh, um, I will show a little bit of the results of the excavation. And uh, there are short five seasons so far, and the three uh, excavation areas, A, B, and C. You can see uh, the top view here. And uh, um, uh, clearly, you can see two, uh, two periods on the site. It's very, uh, some of the structures are very well preserved because very dry area, not much rain. So some structures are standing about two meters high. Uh, but most of these are probably late. They are uh, rounded, small structures, which are dated maybe to the Mamluk Ottoman period, very late. But underneath, there is a, a lot of architecture. We can see a more massive architecture, including uh, what we call a casemate wall, a wall, fortification wall made of uh, rooms or cells, <coughs> which is dated to the Iron Age too. And most of the pottery on the surface is uh, Iron Age too, uh, uh, the first millennium uh, BC. So uh, the first area was in the south, and we excavated there a part of this casemate uh, wall, which is made out of rooms, as you can see in the plan here. Uh, uh, there are rooms with an entrance, and uh, um, uh, the uh, four casemate walls were uh, excavated, and uh, uh, very soon we saw there is a destruction level. I mean, somewhere maybe during the 8th century BC, uh, the site was destructed. There is a, a lot of... Uh, uh, crashed vessels uh, uh, on the floors, uh, ashes and so on. Also evidence uh, uh, of uh, uh, maybe of a battle or something like that. Uh, inside this wall, inside the rooms, which uh, are in, uh, included in the wall. And uh, uh, as we can see, the area inside the, the town was not built uh, very adjacent to the wall. It's, uh, maybe there was structure, but they are not adjacent to the wall. There was an open area in between this casement wall and uh, uh, the structures inside, at least in this area. Um, this is an important point because uh, this is a, a certain way of planning the city. So the destruction layer, you can see here a lot of, lot of pottery here crashed onto the floor is an entrance to a casement. And also there are other evidences of a destruction like uh, uh, arrowheads and uh, sling stones and stuff like that uh, in many places. Uh, and this was uh, in one area and inside, as I said, it's an open area with all kinds of installations, a silo, uh, uh, oven, stuff uh, like that. So this was this area. This is some uh, um, reconstructed pottery from this area. And you can see, uh, I don't know if you are uh, people that are working on pottery will say, OK, these are uh, storage vessels, jars, what we call and the closed vessels, some other smaller storage vessels, and cooking vessel, cooking pots, which is uh, most of the vessels were like uh, were uh, these types. And uh, if we want to compare the types of the pottery, which every uh, I mean uh, pottery is uh, um, indicative of a period and also of a, of a region, and we compare this and. The pottery here is not similar to the pottery in Jerusalem at the same time, let's say, or uh, Lachish. The Judean side is actually much more similar to pottery in the north, like Megiddo, Rehov, uh, Bechan, uh, uh, and these type, uh, these uh, uh, these sites. So uh, if we go by the pottery, this is a northern uh, culture. Maybe it belongs to the northern uh, political unit, which was called it's called a Kingdom of Israel rather than Judah. So actually, this is not the Judean site, but probably an Israelite site, a fortified Israelite site. So the other area, which is in the other side of the site, the northeast side, it's actually bigger now. We are focusing on this site. And this slope is actually the more easier to go up in the slope. And this is also the slope that faces the spring and the, and the valley. So this is probably the area where the entrance to the site was. So we actually want to focus on this area. And uh, uh, we excavated two houses in this area, uh, more or less uh, complete. You can see this, two, two structure. And here, this on the lower part of the, uh, of the photograph, this structure is very close to the fortification wall on the other side of the site. And there is another uh, structure completely excavated. Uh, these uh, uh, houses are of the type of the four-room houses, a very typical uh, 
domestic uh, uh, architecture of biblical Israel and generally the Levant in the Iron Age. Uh, um, there is this is the plan, and uh, uh, this is some uh, reconstruction of other studies of this uh, type of house. Um, there are also a destruction layer, the same destruction area uh, layer in this area, same type of vessels, a uh, lot of complete vessels, uh, sometimes even intact vessels in this area, even a, a lot of uh, ashes burning, uh, even some uh, wooden remains, something like that, very uh, good uh, preservation uh, in this area of these houses. Here are some uh, also pottery from these, uh, this uh, one of these houses, complete uh, jars and also uh, cooking vessels. You can see not much plates and bowls. So, uh, and again, uh, uh, this is the same type of pottery uh, uh, in this area. Other finds we have, uh, as I said, all kinds of uh, um, object maybe related to uh, weapons uh, or battles. We have these sling stones maybe and uh, all these arrowheads. Um, uh, also found. And there's not a lot of decorative uh, elements uh, in the material culture so far. I mean, these are very simple, only pottery, stone items, some metals, but uh, there's only one item with a figurative uh, depiction. This is like a big crater with a snake depiction, uh, which acts very rare in this period, the snake depiction, but we have this uh, vessel too, which is, uh, I don't know what is the story behind uh, this uh, snakes. And the third area is area C, just to the north. It's on the slope, actually not in the fortified area. It's on the slope, uh, northern slope. And uh, um, uh, we have here a structure that was identified before excavation, probably a tower. Uh, we thought this was in a part of the Iron Age fortification. Uh, so we excavated here, but actually uh, uh, this is not an Iron Age uh, element. This uh, tower is actually uh, dated to the Middle Bronze Age too, 800 years earlier. It's also an element of fortification, but uh, of a different period, much earlier. So uh, it's interesting we have this uh, too in the site, uh, 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 and it was not used during the Iron Age, and during the Biblical period. This is some of the remains. You can see the Middle Bronze Age period, uh, animal bones. Uh, this is a very well built. A structure, very thick walls, very big walls, and uh, it was stayed uh, really visible on the surface and we uh, excavated uh, it um, uh, last season. So back to the issue of reach of borders. As I said, we have like these political uh, uh, entities in the Iron Age too in the Southern Levant, and there are also maybe strong uh, uh, central uh, uh, administration and polities. And I think this was uh, can ex explain the uh, extension of this power to the marginal areas, areas which with no agriculture, very uh, arid areas. But because this is a, a central uh, 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 power, um, they extend their uh, power there. And we know uh, this area maybe was located on the border of the kingdom of Israel from the north and Judah in the south. And also there is the border of the Jordan Valley between this kingdom and the Ammonite kingdom to the east. So it's a double uh, border maybe. And as I said, it, uh, the pottery at least indicates this is a, uh, belongs to the Northern uh, entity, to the kingdom of Israel. And maybe uh, this fortified town is on the border and it protects the border uh, on the one hand and on the other hand cont uh, controls this regional water source. And a third, uh, maybe, uh, reason for the site is to control the non sedentary uh, population. There's a mostly nomadic uh, population this, in this area. And since you have a very strong political uh, uh, um, administration, you want to control also this population. So you build some site, administrative site in this region, so you have more control on this region and the population in, in the region. We have some more time, or oh, no? We we have uh, a few minutes more. Yeah. Ah, okay. So uh, just back to the biblical uh, uh, text. Uh, already, is a tale, uh, there are uh, border lists between uh, tribes in the book of Joshua, and all, one of them is between the tribes of Ephraim and Menashe, and uh, uh, it uh, mentions several cities going from Yanoach, Atarot, Narata, and Jericho. It's like a series of cities. So. 
Zertal said this site is Atarot, but I think uh, other people too that see this site maybe is Naarata in the Bible because it's uh, closest down to Jericho, uh, which makes sense. So maybe it is even mentioned uh, in the Bible. And uh, I'm not sure what uh, if it means that this is a border town or administrative town or both. Uh, this is a question we have uh, uh, to think about. And even uh, there was another text found uh, uh, not in a site, but there was uh, like a papyrus, which mentions also the site of Naarata and wine casks that was uh, delivered uh, to Jerusalem. So uh, maybe it's also the uh, site. And uh, um, um, as I said, this is clearly a, 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 a military uh, type of, of site because it's located in a strategic point on the top of the hill, not clear. I mean, it controls the water source, but it's not very close. I mean, uh, if you want to carry the water, you have to carry them up. So this was more a strategic site rather than a habitation site. So maybe it housed mostly uh, some units, army units, uh, but it may have also had some administrative uh, uh, functions on the, uh, the um population around it and maybe a similar site is located about 10 kilometers to the west on the same uh, valley the Uja uh, Wadi Uja and it's also located near a spring near a water uh, location this is a site called Khirbet Marjama excavated by uh, Mazar and here there's also a tower a fortification also dated to the Iron Age too and uh, so maybe this is another uh, uh, point Another uh, uh, point, uh, uh, stronghold on this borderline between the uh, northern and southern entities, possibly. Or maybe it's also controlling the route and the water sources. I mean, the, but it can be both, yeah. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, there are these different entities, Israel, Judah, and Ammon, bordered in this area. And there are some uh, differences in the material culture, if you want to... Uh, um, uh, compare them and as I said the pottery is more of the northern type but if we talk, look about the architecture the site planning there is a typical what we call it a radial plan of the G Judean fortified site which is where the houses are combined within this casemate wall they use these rooms in the wall as, as rooms of, of domestic houses and we can see it in many uh, Judean sites in this period uh, but the question, do we see it in, in this site uh, of Uja? And this is a question because on the, um, yeah, this is very common uh, uh, from the 10th century BC, uh, as in the site of uh, Kayafa. Uh, but uh, do we see it also on the site of uh, Uja here on the border of Israel and Judah? That's the question. And as I said, in the southern part, it seems like the, uh, the wall is not connecting to the, to the houses. But the question does what happens on the northern side, but here this uh, building is very close to the uh, casement wall, but we still have to continue, finish excavating here and see if it really connects and if the uh, back rooms are really part of the wall or not. So if it does, though, it will be interesting, but it will be like a hybrid uh, type of uh, uh, town planning and maybe it will show some kind of uh, cultural influence, maybe, because this is the border side, so maybe we have some... Uh, uh, things uh, going from the other side of the border, influencing maybe uh, uh, the material culture. So, but this is maybe uh, for, for the future because we plan to uh, excavate several more uh, seasons here and maybe even locate the gate of the town. So thank you. This is, uh, ends my, my talk.